Hello, Steve Lentz here with Discover Options here at Option View Systems. Welcome to this presentation of three different S&P 500 market timing reports for advanced options traders. This will be for Friday, April 27th, getting ready for Monday's open on April 30th. The presenter material is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Before we get started, please click on the subscribe button. That way you'll get alerted whenever we come out with new videos. And also, we have a free ebook for you to please uh, just click the link and then give us your information. We will get this free ebook out to you. Simple Steps to Options Trading Success, co authored by myself and Jim Graham. We have three reports, and uh, let's go back up here. The Condor Butterfly Timing Report for those that sell uh, options premium in a delta neutral fashion. The Bull Put Spread Timing Report for those that like to sell put premium out of the money 30 days away or so. And then the Directional Likelihood Report, which has taken on a little bit of a different flair recently. Okay, let's take a look at the current market condition that we have, and we uh, describe this in three different dimensions. Uh, we look at the price action, the trend, and then the stochastic situation. In terms of price action, we have had two consecutive upswing bars on Thursday and then again on Friday. These two, uh, these two upswing bars occurred uh, while price is, or the index S&P 500 is underneath its 50-day simple moving average. Long-term trend is down. And then in terms of the stochastic, it actually turned up just above 50, uh, so we're in the range between 30 and 70, but trending upward above its three-day simple moving average, or percent D. So all that makes for a market condition uh, that's, ha that's occurred roughly 129 times since January of 2000. Okay, so that's our population that we are dealing with here. Let's go to the first report, and this is for those that sell premium in a delta neutral fashion, perhaps through condors and butterflies. So since January of 2000, we've had roughly 4,595 daily closes of the S&P 500. Now, of those bars, you know, for all that history, 64.6% .6 of the bars are considered favorable for selling premium where the actual subsequent 21 bar movement was less than what the option prices were implying. That's what makes it favorable. If the market doesn't move as much as what the options are implying, that's a favorable situation for selling options premium. And that occurred uh, not quite two-thirds of the time, but 64.6% .6 of the time. Okay, so that's the benchmark. That's the historical benchmark that we have in the S&Ps. Now, let's look, go to our market condition that we have now. Our market condition has occurred 129 times, and of those 129, 58.1% were favorable for selling options, options premium. That's less than the benchmark by roughly 6.5%. Okay, so statistically, it's more likely than normal that the current market condition will end up being one that is unfavorable for market neutral option premium selling. Does it mean that you would uh, lose money? Well, 58% of the time, historically, it's worked out. So you might catch, you know, some of that 58%. Um, but it just, you know, you know, relative to the benchmark of the historical behavior of the S&Ps, we're in a time where it looks like um, it's more likely than normal to be unfavorable. That's what we're saying here. Okay, now let's go to the put premium selling. The bull put spread timing report uh, assumes that you're looking to sell put premium 30 days away, okay, roughly a standard deviation away out of the money. All right, so uh, we've had 4,595 daily closes of the SPX. Now, of those, 82.7% turned out to be favorable bars for selling put premium in that fashion because the actual 21 bar downside movement was less than what the options were implying. And we measure that by looking at the skew-adjusted uh, uh, VIX. All right, so 82.7% is the historical benchmark in terms of selling. You could flip a coin and, you know, continually, on average, 82% of the time, you'll end up on a bar that turns out to be favorable for selling put premium in that way. 
Now, also during that time, we've had the 129 occurrences of this market condition. Of those 129, 83.7% turned out to have been favorable. So that's a 1% difference. It's pretty much a wash in terms of bull put spreads. Okay, just a 1% difference. Technically, it's a little bit higher. Technically, it would end up being more likely to be favorable, but it's so close, we're just going to call this a wash, okay? Uh, there's really no, there's just a 1% advantage over just the benchmark. That's where we're at on this report. Finally, let's get to the likelihood report. We just changed the format a little bit, and I'm getting emails, favorable ones to this, these changes with some great suggestions, and we're going to take a strong look at some of those. Um, but let's just go up here to the top. All right. So we've had 4,598 occurrences of our S&P 500 close, you know, closes since Jan of 2000. And then what we're doing is measuring the 5-day rate of change, the 10-day rate of change, and the 15-day rate of change. Now, what that means is from one close to the close five bars later, there's roughly 0.09 of a percent difference to the upside. Okay, remember the S&P 500s have been, you know, all in all bullish since Jan of 2000. So on average, okay, you have, you know, a five-day change from close to close five days later, five bars later, of almost a tenth of a percent. The 10-day rate of change from one close to the one 10 bars later is roughly almost, it's at 0.18%, it's not quite a fifth of a percent to the upside. And then the three-week rate of change is at 0.28, okay? You know, over a, over a quarter of a percent to the upside. That's the average rate of change over the history of the S&P 500 going back to Jan of 2000. Okay, now let's go to our 129 occurrences of our current market condition. Okay, that's over here. This is the count, 129. That's roughly 2.8% of the uh, uh, total sample that we have. The five-day rate of change on average of those 129 turns out to be downward 0.2%. Instead of going up 0.09 to the benchmark, it actually is average going down 0.2 of a percent, down a fifth of a percent of those 129. The 10-day rate of change, interesting, pot to the upside, plus 0.35, which is more than the benchmark of 0.18. And then the three-week rate of change is at 0.7, okay, much greater than 0.28. Now, how significant are these differences? Okay, I mean, I mean, in, you know, here we have the five-day change to the downside instead of going to the upside. Is that a big deal or not? And to, so to measure that, we look at a, a Z-score. It's called a Z-score. And what we're going to do is look at these differences and evaluate them in the context of the standard deviation. So let's come up here. And we can see that the five-day rate of change, the standard deviation, is a 0.81%. Okay, about eight-tenths of a percent. That's the standard deviation. Now, the downside difference over here is at 0.29. That works out to about a 0.36 of a standard deviation or 36% of a standard deviation to the downside. That's one way to look at it. It's not even half a standard deviation to the downside. It's, it, that change lies within half a standard deviation, okay, which isn't that tremendously significant. All right, the upside difference, 0 0.17, 0 0.35, and instead of 0.18, that turns out to have a z-score of 0.14. That's basically 14% of a standard deviation to the upside. The 15-day Z-score at 0.3, that's well within half a standard deviation to the upside. So you can see that all in all, these are not really significant differences. Nothing to hugely hang your hat on in terms of being different than the actual benchmark. 
Now, here's where things get interesting, because when we go to the price action and we say, okay, so when Monday comes, if price goes above Friday's high, excuse me, if price goes above Friday's high, then what is the average uh, five-day, 10-day, 15-day rate of change from Friday's close? Look at this. In those cases where Friday's high is exceeded, the five-day change is at 0 0.77. There's a difference of 0.68 from the benchmark of, the, of 0.09. The Z-score on that is at 0.83. Now we're pushing a full standard deviation to the upside. The 10-day rate of change, 1.39% to the upside. Okay, that's a difference of 1.21. That's, that's just barely over a full standard deviation to the upside. And then the 15-day rate of change at 2.3%. Look at that, a Z-score of 1.45. So this is significant. So if on Monday it exceeds Friday's high, okay, we're, we're looking at some a, a pretty strong historical basis uh, for looking at some, con, you know, some, some continued bullish activity here. Likewise, on the downside, if price exceeds Friday's low, that's occurred 48 times. The upside occurred 74 times. Look at this. To the downside, 1.02%, difference of 1.11. These Z-scores are all, well, this is a, over a standard deviation, about a standard deviation and a little bit under it. So all, this, all these are to the downside. Look at that. Look at that. Very interesting, isn't it? Okay, so... Um, that's it for directional movement. Now, here's some interesting stuff about volatility. The benchmark realized volatility, 5, 10, and 15 day realized, is it pretty much in the 15s and 16%. You see that? With our current market condition, the realized volatility of those 129 occurrences were in the 22s. 21 and a half, 22, 22 and a half. You see that? That's significantly greater than the baseline benchmark of in something in the 15s and 16s. So our current market condition historically results in an average realized volatility much higher than the benchmark. Now, so more significantly, let's look at where the VIX is at. The short-term VIX, the nine-day, is at 14.44. The 30-day VIX is at 15.41. These are far less than what the average realized volatilities are for our current market condition. And so, hence, that contributes to a bit of a disadvantage for the condor butterfly traders. And so, uh, you know, just to be a, a bit careful there. It looks like we don't, you know, uh, that the prices of the options might be a bit undervalued relative to what this current market condition can give us in terms of volatility. So just be on your toes out there, okay? Folks, thanks so much for joining Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Steve Lentz with Discover Options. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.